The biggest threat facing Bob Iger and his reign at Disney is one Nelson Peltz. And unfortunately for Iger, Nelson Peltz is done playing games because shit just got real. Since every video is someone's first video, before we get into the events of the last few days, let's begin with briefly recapping for new viewers who Nelson Peltz is and what he wants to do with Disney in being an activist shareholder. The term activist shareholder is one that can be misunderstood, but in this case, activist does not refer to an ideologue or other useful idiot committed to making the world a worse place to be for everyone. As such, and as pointed out by my colleague Tom Connors, anti-activist shareholder might be a better colloquial term to describe what Nelson Peltz is. But in finance lingo, activist shareholder refers to a shareholder who actively wants to change the direction of the company, because he is of the opinion that the company is either mismanaged or otherwise fails to produce the value and results it by rights should be producing. And so it came to pass that back in January of this year, Nelson Peltz and his Trian group initiated a campaign for a position on the Disney board called Restore the Magic, which they evidently felt that Disney no longer delivered. But the Iger regime firmly rejected this bid for a seat at the board, which led to a brief proxy war. That's finance lingo for that the activist shareholder actively tries to persuade other shareholders to use their proxy votes to remove a sitting board member and place the activist shareholder there instead. What happened after that was that just to get Peltz off his back, Iger agreed to almost everything he wanted in the short term, while Peltz promised that his fight for board seats and, if need be, all-out proxy war would be back on if Iger failed to show signs that things were turning around in the next few months. Well, in those next few months, everything, and I mean everything, has gone from bad to worse for Disney, as Iger continuously demonstrates that he is incapable of getting the company out of the very problems he got it into in the first place. Disney's board of directors is of course no help, as they're all Iger appointees and loyalists, who will back him in whatever he wants to do, something which was revealed in an explosive CNBC piece a few months back. What that means is that Disney's board is incapable of functioning in the way a board should function, which is to hold the CEO accountable to the shareholders. Instead, Disney's current board shields and protects Iger from the shareholders that he is screwing over with his extreme mismanagement. Realizing this, Nelson Peltz recently requested more board seats, two to be precise, one for himself and one for Jay Rasulo, Disney's former CFO. And obviously, both Peltz and Rasulo are a million times more competent and qualified to serve on Disney's board than any of Iger's friends that he put in there, no matter how diverse they may be. And that is, by the way, the Iger board's first line of defense whenever their competency is rightfully called into question, that the board is so diverse that half of them are women. One of those women even shared a dorm with Iger's wife back when they were students at an elite university. How's that for a board qualification? But even so, on January 16th, Bob Iger and his acolytes that make up the Disney board formally rejected Nelson Peltz and Jay Rosulo, and furthermore, they recommended that come the vote that be held, presumably sometime in April, all of Disney shareholders should vote for Disney's current board of Iger's minions. Their reasons for rejecting Peltz, reprinted in The Hollywood Reporter, reads, and I quote, In deciding not to recommend Mr. Peltz, the board of directors considered a number of factors, including that in a two-year quest for a seat on the Disney board, Mr. Peltz had not actually presented a single strategic idea for Disney, that his assessment of Disney seemed oblivious to the ongoing secular change in the entertainment industry, that Mr. Peltz's experience was primarily in commodity consumption, 
consumer packaged goods businesses and not the media or technology sector. That Mr. Peltz had no experience in a business that is primarily driven by creative talent and focused on delivering uniquely memorable customer experiences. And that Mr. Peltz's partnership with Mr. Perlmutter, who owns the lion's share of the equity claimed by the Trian Group, and the complexity of Mr. Perlmutter's history with Disney and Mr. Iger and other senior executives, created significant concern regarding how that partnership would impact Mr. Pelt's agenda as a director. If you thought that sounded like someone really stretching to make up excuses in corporate speak, then congrats, you are indeed right, because that's all that was, stretching to come up with excuses. What that actually said was that Nelson Peltz has no formal experience in a field where Disney's current board now has a track record of failure, more failure, and nothing but failure. But more importantly, that Bob Iger is terrified of Ike Perlmutter. Not just because Perlmutter is a hundredfold the businessman and strategist that Iger ever was, and not just because it was when Iger removed Perlmutter from proceedings that Marvel went from non-stop crowd pleasers to bomb factory almost overnight, but because Iger broke his word and every promise he ever gave Perlmutter when he agreed to sell Marvel to Disney in the first place. And seeing as Marvel was Perlmutter's baby, he just might be a little bit cross about that. And whatever you may think about Perlmutter, or what horror stories you have heard about him, stories deliberately leaked to the press by Team Kevin Feige, I might add, the bad guy in this situation is indisputably Bob Iger, and he is terrified of getting his comeuppance. But just because Iger and his minions rejected Pelts again doesn't mean they're out of the woods just yet, because it's up to the shareholders which board members to vote for, and Pelts is speaking directly to them. And in order to ensure they will hear him, he is speaking out to everyone. To this end, the website RestoreTheMagic.com, after being taken down since he last gave Iger the chance to turn Disney around, is now back up again. On the landing page itself, anyone can see just how badly Disney is performing, which is really embarrassing to Bob Iger right there. First, a simple visual illustrates how badly Disney has performed over the past 10 years, not just compared to the S&P 500, but compared to the other companies against which Disney has chosen to compare themselves. Next, readers see just how badly Disney has performed during the tenure of each of the current board members compared with the S&P 500, then, and perhaps most damningly, how the current board members, and even Iger himself, has no real reason to care about this, or any real incentive to make the company do better, because they have so little invested in it. So what if the share price goes to hell? They don't care, they're in it for their fixed salary, which they get anyway. By contrast, Pelt's Trion Group had 3 billion reasons to manage the company better, so that the share price increases to the benefit of all shareholders. Finally, towards the bottom of the landing page, readers can compare the generalities Disney practices right now in a number of strategic areas, versus the specifics that the Trion Group would push. But Peltz didn't restrict himself to merely publish a website. He's three billion deep in this, so he also appeared on CNBC, where he didn't pull any punches. How long do we have to continue to suffer with this great board? By the way, they said I have no media experience. I don't claim to have any. But I would tell you, I don't think they have much media experience. They broke a record this year. Do you know that the last five movies in a row will lose us. Now, if yeah. that comes with media experience, I want a guy who doesn't have a media experience. So, so David, let's deal with facts. The company has underperformed. I made a run at them last year. They promised they were going to improve things. I took them at their word. Things got worse. The stock went down. Results got worse. Okay, so no more. I can't continue to give them more opportunity. That's just the opening salvo. In the coming weeks, the Trian Group has promised to keep exposing the incompetence of Bob Iger and his board on both the Restore the Magic website as well as on X, all while prepping extensive lobbying efforts aimed at all of Disney shareholders. 
the big problem for Bob Iger and his hand-picked board of minions is that while there are still some people out there suffering a bad case of JPEG derangement syndrome, even some content creators who are smart enough that they should know better, more and more are waking up to the indisputable fact that all of Disney's current woes, every last one of them, directly or indirectly, are due to the mismanagement of one Bob Iger. Blaming JPEG for Iger's own mistakes isn't going to fly anymore. That's the biggest problem for Bob Iger right there. Nelson Peltz has reality and truth on his side. But even armed with that, the only ones who can truly save Disney at this point are Disney's own shareholders. Some of the bigger ones, like BlackRock, are Team Iger through and through, or perhaps more accurately, Iger is Team BlackRock through and through. And so, it is in the hands of all of Disney's other non-BlackRock and non-WEF aligned shareholders to vote out Iger's board and replace it with as many Nelson Peltz appointees as legally possible. Only then can Iger be removed, and only then can we hope that Disney may be salvaged. Let me know your thoughts on all of this in the comments.